Now let's get into the meat potatoes of this whole thing. What we're talking about as we're recording, the big the big deal. Everyone's been been ragging on the league and waiting. Where are the two coaches? Where are the Breakers and the Panthers coaches? When is this thing going to get announced? Can we get this going? We get the Birmingham confirmation. Everyone thinks that uh, maybe we're going to have to wait till February, which, as I've said on this show, would be disappointing. Mm-hmm. But all of a sudden, 15 minutes before the herd, even we're talking even tighter of a cycle than the last two. 15 minutes, that beautiful message, that beautiful tweet pops up. Coaching announcement coming starting at noon in the herd. And as much as you don't care for the herd, we have the we had a great meme today about, you know, just, uh, you know, you, you get your deal. You get your dose. <laughs> you know, I got to say, I got to say, I've never been forced to watch the herd, but at the same time, I've never prior to this. I just never watched the herd. Right. It's not that bad. I don't get why everybody hates it that much. I'm sure maybe my opinion will change. It seems that he has a little bit of a thing going on with Baker Maysfield. That's what I, I Mayfield. Yes. I'm sorry. I I assume <laughs> there's probably more to it than I wish to know, but uh, that's what I gather from Colin Cowherd. Every time we tune in, he's talking about Baker at some some point. I thought he loved him until today, and then it's really, a, oh no, he doesn't love him. It's kind of a running joke, actually. That's what I find hilarious. Like because I'm at work myself for this and soon enough, you know, we, we follow message boards all through the day. And sure enough, one of the, our buddies in there goes, Oh God, Baker, why did it have to be Baker? <laughs> <laughs> but 15 minutes before they say we're doing this and they didn't even wait the whole three hours, much like the last two. They, mm-hmm. they got about a little halfway ish through the show and then said, all right, let's do it. Final two dropping right now. And you know, they, they dropped the first one, Larry Fedora, who mm-hmm. has backgrounds, head coaching Southern Miss, North Carolina, mostly a college coach. And a lot of people went, that's pretty solid. You know, his resume's got it. You know, it definitely backs it up. It's going with the same vibe a lot of the coaches that have been selected so far have been either that high profile or high tenured college coaching mm-hmm. va- vibe or one that's been kind of back and forth. And then they slammed us with the big one. The one that was, we kind of got a hint last week. We didn't, we didn't think it was going to happen. We thought it was some different role. We even speculated in the speculation mm-hmm, right. zone about it. Jeff Fisher is going to coach for the Michigan Panthers. And if you didn't think it blew up just with in our own circles, the sports world went, what? Right. Excuse me? This man is going where? If the USFL wasn't in people's radars now, Jeff Fisher going to the Panthers instantly flipped the switch. Well, like we were talking about earlier before the show and our friend, uh, our den USFL over on Twitter pointed out the Panthers have now surpassed the Pittsburgh Maulers on Twitter with, as the most followed USFL franchise within a day, like less yeah. than a day. And they, I can't remember what the total number was, what, what they came back from, but I mean, they now lead. And I mean, I, we've talked about this in the past. It makes sense. Me, again, being a Lions fan, those people in Michigan, they want a team that's going to win football. We don't know if they're going to win, but they still are the last professional. I know there's arena teams that have won, but we're talking professional, traditional football team to win a championship in the state of Michigan. And on top of that, they're getting a legitimate coach. And sure, ha-ha, slap my knee. We've all seen the comment. We've all seen the joke of, oh, they're going five and five. Oh, they're going four and six. I'll tell you this. And this and maybe, you know what? This is this is a hot take. Ref's hot okay. take. Okay. 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 There's not any great coach that is perfect all the time. Bill Belichick is a perfect example. Yes, he won a bunch of Super Bowls with Tom Brady. Trust me, Bill Belichick has had his years where he wasn't that great of a coach. For instance, he was he was an assistant on the Lions for crying out loud. Uh, Tomlin, I mean, went to the Super Bowl, won with, with the Steelers, has also had horrible seasons. I mean, the Lions always have horrible seasons, but I mean, Jim Caldwell, great seasons and mediocre seasons. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I look at a guy like Jeff Fisher, the equation isn't there that it's instantly he's going to be a bad coach or a laughable coach or this and that. It's, it's, it's completely different. It's apples and oranges. And I mean, to judge somebody based on a couple seasons, I think it's silly, right? This is really going to come down to who these guys are going to pick. Like, who are the players that are going to be on their team? Are they able to manage a, a, a small squad that can be competitive for 10 weeks and hopefully an extra two if they make the, the playoffs? So, I mean, Fisher, to me, great pick. Now, 
Fedora, I do want to point out, when I think of a Larry Fedora, I don't think of a visor. But I will say, this dude is jacked. There's one guy I wouldn't want to start a fight with, it's Larry Fedora. You know, when I hear... I saw the pictures. I right? saw the photos. Jeez. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I hear the name Larry Fedora. You know what I think? I think of a dude that has, like, his wall covered with, like, replica anime swords Wearing a fedora, <laughs> tipping it, m'lady. But no, this m'lady. dude, this dude, <laughs> I mean, m'lady. the refs better watch out. They better give him the right calls. I mean, this dude might run out on the field and take care of business himself. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Now, those those photos, I, I that really got me <laughs> a little bit stunned there. Um, I, I, I did find funny too, with the comments from some people, they're going, uh, man, it's, he's got to feel bad being overshadowed with Jeff Fisher, just getting all of a sudden annou- announced like that. But I mean, what, what do you guys say? I, I can go over Jeff Fisher's resume, former NFL player. He's been through the ringer in multiple programs, you know, <laughs> he's guided the Titans to, to a super bowl and was within a yard and a half at one point of possibly going to overtime in that contest. I mean, we could, I mean, three division titles, two different teams head coaching in the NFL, you know, constant experience, you know, credit. Most people now remember him lately for seven and nine in, in St. Louis and LA and for kind of bowing out at the end of his tenure and end of his run. Funny enough in his, uh, in kind of his write up for the press release, the media advisory mm-hmm. for these coaches, he kind of, he elaborated saying, it's like, you know what? I was missing it. I've been following the football. Um, he's mentioned he was, he's been fishing a lot mm-hmm. <laughs> since then. Um, and he just, uh, he referenced that he wanted a passion to get back into the game. And sure enough, Fox came knocking is how it's being relayed. So here he is, you know, Fedora is a little different. He's coming from Baylor mm-hmm. as he was doing off as he was their offensive coordinator just this year, that team won the big 12 championship for those that aren't aware or haven't been following college football as closely if you haven't yet. So a little bit different backgrounds and views, although Fisher's name instantly is recognizable. And we were wondering, you know, not like some of us and between us too, is there going to be a bigger fish? You know, cause the big, honestly, if you want to go big fish by name, my argument is Todd Haley or Mike Riley were those Mm -hmm. guys right now. And even to some people, it's like, you know, Todd Haley's reputation eh, to some people is mixed. You know, Mike Riley's is more favorable, but it's not like big, successful, right? You know, someone that you're swaying from the NFL. He was in the NFL, but it's not saying that he was like a Jeff Fisher NFL figure. Mm-hmm. Fisher carries a different demeanor. And even online, you know, he kind of is a meme at times online sure. for the NFL. So everybody was getting in on this. <laughs> they have sure. we're, P, pro foot. I mean, the guys from uh, pardon my take, we're talking bleacher report, any outlet that ever dealt or has talked Jeff Fisher in their life reported this today. Right. So big fish. I mean, it, it's, it's a good name. It's a big name to have. And I mean, that's, that's important when you're doing these types of things. I mean, like you mentioned, Mike Riley, uh, looking at the other coaches, I would agree. Probably Mike Riley, Todd Haley, Mike Riley's perfect for, I mean, with the spring football experience, but I mean, Again, looking back at what are your top teams? They already knew Mich- Mich- I think you brought this up to me in chat earlier, so I'm going to steal this from you. But sure, sure. I agree that the Michigan Panthers have the opportunity to be what the St. Louis Battlehawks were. Yes, that is in me. the USFL. So that mm-hmm. credit to Zach on that. I'm just saying it. But I, I, I 100 percent agree here, and I think giving them probably the biggest name coach out of the bunch is only going to help that franchise, right? So all in all, I mean, great coaches, great hires. When we look at it from beginning to end, I will say I'm a little surprised that we did only get one coach from the spring league with Andrus. Yep. I thought we might see a Gilbride or one of those other guys that came over from the XFL come over, but at the end of the day, Fox is going a different direction. But I I can't be mad at it because everybody that they picked is good. I like it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not mad. I mean, there, there are ones where, you know, I, I agree with some folks in the community where it's like, yeah, you know, there are some ones you, you're going to see how they pan out either returning back like Todd Haley or even like a Kevin Sumlin who's coming over after a terrible tenure with, for example, Arizona mm-hmm. and kind of hitting the reset in Houston or well, Houston by name. Eventually right. that's the idea. You know, we understand they're eventually going to move out of Birmingham. Nonetheless though, you know, if I had a second thought, I've said this too. You have said this too. Mega Bowl winner Hal Mummy. I wanted him so badly to have a spot, and I know that 
the 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 idea right now it sounds like is Fox wants their own thing. They don't want the TSL connected to it, even though Brian Woods is in it, and Bart Andrus really is the only exception. But the reason why I see that as the only exception, Andrus was with the TSL for since its inception in 2018. Mm-hmm. He he almost was deserving of a spot just from the work he put in with helping that organization and being an influence and helping players with that. Uh, I mean, he also coached the generals, which was a name they're going to bring over anyway. It just, that one had the dots because of the longevity. I just wish mummy, like, I just wish how mummy had a chance because of the fact, like he was successful. It shouldn't be about yeah. the TSL. If it was that, then that's a shame. But I hope it, it wasn't. And I it's mean, an air raid offense like that, that you're talking explosive offenses. I mean, that, that would have been the gate. That's the only regret. If we could even expand it to 10, Mm -hmm. like I would be, I, if I had my soapbox, I'd be begging and pleading to Eric Shanks or anyone on Fox. Like I beg you, give me at least how mummy and two more teams. This man will make your production look that much better because it's explosive play that he brings. That's the only one dude knows how to coach fun football straight Mm -hmm. up. You know, one thing I will say that's interesting about all of this, I don't know if you remember way back, you know, let's take a trip into the time machine to 2019, maybe early 2020 when the XFL was announcing their coaches. There was a rumor that Jeff Fisher was coming to coach for the Tampa Bay Vipers. That's right. That's right. And I, 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 and I, if I recall correctly, it, I, I, I'm fairly certain the two had discussions and it was one of those things where they didn't come up with a deal. And then shortly after it was Mark Tressman that came out and was announced coach. But even at the time, Fisher was kind of teasing the crowd. I don't know if you recall, he, he posted his flight itinerary where he's flying to Tampa Bay the mm-hmm. day of the announcement. And that really <laughs> got people jived up and it wasn't him at all. It wasn't him. He, he said no and whatever. But it is interesting. He said no to the XFL, but he will. He did say yes to the USFL. Right. Well, I think too that plays in. If again, I'm going to go off as media advisor. You know, he has he's had some time away. This would be going on year six of his last of his la- from his last stint with a, an actual professional program mm-hmm. because that in 2016 he was relieved of his duties with the Rams, and he's kind of been you know either advisory roles or in flux for that time. So I think that's an, I think you just had enough time to where that's where you're saying I missed the game mm-hmm. and you know, three years removed, like, okay, maybe you start thinking about it, but maybe you enjoy some things six. And if you really still have that urge at that point, and it looks like that's what it was and maybe it just, that's how it lined up for that case. We'll, we'll never, I don't think we'll ever fully no. know unless we were get someone that was on the ground floor fully, but I will say, thank God, no Mark Tressman, because I was really sitting there worrying. I'm like, if Tressman's available and this man gets a job, <laughs> I, I would have got roasted online or a ping from the league saying, God, come on, dude, come on, dude. You can't be saying that. We just announced him as coach. So <laughs> I'm, I'm very glad. And I mean, nothing against Mark Tressman. I'm just saying there's an unhealthy piece of this whole thing, at least an unhealthy appetite for tight ends that I can't comprehend that tight I, ends there's something time quarterbacks. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> good for him, but, uh, but I will say the XFL is coming back next year. You can go play for the Miami Vipers or wherever they end up because I will be amazed if the Vipers stay in Tampa Bay, especially with the Bandits same, now. But same. Uh, and the, hey, that that's next month. The XFL stuff's going to be dropping. Yeah. We'll be. I mean, we'll we'll probably hint on it on here, but I know other shows on our group they'll be talking about that exclusively, and I'm I'm pumped for that too. Just saying, like mm. I, you, any for anyone that listens to this, you we know we love seeing these leagues grow. We hope that we can coexist. But you know that eventually is going to come out. I'm excited for that at Me some too. point. But I'll I'll save that talk for outside of here because you know by next week we'll be in February and who knows what the hell will happen at that point. Yeah, all. I mean, we'll probably talk about it. I mean, yeah. there's nothing holding us to talk about. The title is one thing. We're our own people. We'll do what we want. Fair, fair enough.